QR code offers a way of encoding information in structured visual patterns. There is no need to emphasize how widely it has been used in our daily life, for example, mobile payment and museum exhibitions. However, one known challenge for QR codes is to scan them at a long distance. For example, if there is a billboard on the other side of the street, the QR code on it may look very small on your camera app, such that the size of each black or white square is comparable to a single pixel. And this is a problem, as you can see in this image on the right. The image looks very pixelated. As a result, the camera app will fail to scan this QR code. It is also important to notice that the definition of long depends on the physical size of the QR code. What really matters is how many pixels are there on the camera image. For a very, very small QR code like this, you may have to hold your phone very close to it. So how can we make sure our codes can be scanned at a long enough distance? One idea is to make the code as big as possible, which, as you can imagine, is not always the best idea. Our solution is a novel algorithm and system for scanning QR codes called QFAR. Here are some images we captured at Times Square, where we tried to scan a code at different distances. Conventional QR code scanner only works at 20 meters, but QFAR works even at around 90 meters, even when each black or white bit is about one pixel big. QFAR offers a four to five times improvement, depending on the imaging conditions. Our main observation is that a QR code is a binary code and contains more than 100 black or white bits. So there are two to the 100 possible codes in total. But do we really need to recover every single bit if our goal is to just identify a unique code? Let's assume you're at the Times Square. You scan a code at a distance and you get a low resolution image. Conventional, de conventional decoding tries very hard to find the correct code in the entire code space, which fails because there are just too many possibilities. But we know that the code being scanned must be within the vicinity of the user, and there's always a limited number of codes in that vicinity. Let's say the code must be within 500 meters of the user, and there are 10,000 such codes. What we really need to do is to find the best, the most probable match among these 10,000 codes. Specifically, we compare our scan code to all the candidate codes in the vicinity and return the one with shortest L2 distance, which is similar to template matching in computer vision. It is interesting that this very simple algorithm works very well in practice. So why? Here are two insights. First, QR codes use read Solomon error correction, which means that the minimum distance between two possible codes is greater than one bit. But more importantly, because we only have a limited number of codes in the vicinity, it is very unlikely that there is a code that is very close to the correct code in terms of number of bits. Therefore, even for a highly degraded image, it is very unlikely to be matched to a wrong code. All right, now let's take a look at the whole pipeline. After we capture an image, we detect where the code is and rectify the code to a square shape. The GPS location of the user is sent to a server, which returns a list of all codes in the vicinity. The rectified code is then matched against this list of candidate codes. We still have two missing pieces in this pipeline. First, how do we detect the code? Our detector module is based on YOLO, a widely used object detection network, which gives a bounding box of the code. Then we have another aligner module which is based on a key point detection network. It predicts the precise locations of the four corners and then apply a geometry transform 
to map the code from this tilted shape to a rectified square shape. Both models are trained with simulated images of QR codes, and we use a physics-based model of the imaging process so that it works well even for real images. Okay, the second missing piece is the code database. Especially, how do we get a database of nearby codes? Fortunately, this can be done by crowdsourcing. Every time a user scans a code, the GPS location of the user can be used to update and estimate of the code location. Therefore, as more and more users scan the code, the accuracy of the code location keeps improving. Notice that so far we have been focusing on codes with fixed locations, such as QR codes in restaurants, museums, and so on. Now let's take a look at the results. We compare QFAR with two baselines. One is a traditional QR code decoder, available in OpenCV. Since their detector fails most of the time, we replace that with our detector. Another baseline is WeChat QR code, which also uses a neural network to detect a code, and then they apply a super-resolution network to upscale the image. However, it's still based on conventional QR code decoding. We first compare them on simulated data at different distances, and we can see that because of the location-guided decoding, the performance of QFAR is significantly better than the baselines. Then let me go through some qualitative comparisons on real data. In this example, the conventional method stops working when the resolution of the code reaches about 2 by 2 pixels per bit. But QFAR continues to working until it reaches about 0.5 by 0.5 pixels per bit, which is a huge improvement. In addition to distance, QFAR is, always, is also robust against other challenging code scanning scenarios, such as viewing angles. Conventional scanner can only scan this code from the front, but QFAR can be used to scan the code from a very large angle. QFAR is also robust to motion blur caused by camera shake, which is difficult to completely avoid, especially in the dark environment. And QFAR is also robust to noise and artifacts due to poor lighting. I'd like to end this talk with two additional applications. QFAR does not just make scanning codes easier, but it also has the potential to enable what we call serendipitous scanning. When a user is taking a picture, even if they don't have the intention to scan a code, QFAR still have the power to identify the extremely small codes in the image. In other words, these codes are scanned as a surprise to the user. This capability of serendipitous scanning may have a lot of potential applications, including providing visual guide to nearby stores and restaurants, or using these codes as anchors for augmented reality elements to make the camera view look more vivid and fun. In addition to location-based pruning, the same idea can also be, can also be applied when the code space can be pruned using other context information. In logistics industry, the code space may be pruned down to the packages you expect it to receive today in your local region. For friendly on a social media app, the code space may be pruned down to users who are actively waiting for friending requests. We think the proposed technique can be adapted to a wide range of code scanning applications even beyond codes with fixed locations.